Soviet leaders lacked trust towards Ukraine. Therefore, since the 1920s, Stalin's trustees were sent to leading positions in Ukraine. And if national cadres were nominated for the first roles, they were tested for reliability and loyalty. Rakovsky, Molotov, Kaganovich, Kvirin, Kosor, and many others were Moscow appointees. Ukraine the Kremlin not so much hated Ukraine, but lacked trust towards it and was scared to lose it, because it was a special issue of that power, the power nest. Not so much hated it, but feared it all the time. No matter how much time it spent controlling, it was always cautious. Later, if a local resident became the head of the National Republic, Moscow sent a supervisor as his deputy. The Soviet Union inherited this scheme from the Russian Empire. If the first head of the Republic was a local, Moscow sent him the second secretary, who was always a Russian. This was the case in all the republics, and it was clear that he immediately informed if something was wrong. But in the 1960s, during the so-called Khrushchev Thor, characterized by the weakening of totalitarian power and the relative liberalization of political life, the power in Ukraine passed to Petro Shelest. As Harvard University professor Serhi Plochi writes in his book The Gate of Europe, History of Ukraine, Shelest believed that his main task was not to carry out orders from Moscow, but to contribute to the economic development of Ukraine and its culture. The political situation in Moscow that reminded of the 1920s helped Shelest return to the ideas of national communism and his ability to embody them for a long time after the overthrow of Khrushchev. I think that Shelest preferably understood where and under what conditions he lived and worked. He worked for Ukraine, and he did so quite sincerely. But it was for communist Ukraine, which never thought about abandoning its principles dictated by Moscow. But he had Ukrainian roots, and they developed even more. Petro Shelest had deep Ukrainian roots. He was born in the Kharkiv Oblast in 1908 in a peasant family, descended from Cossack captain Vasil Shelest, one of the Haidamaki leaders, working at various industrial enterprises of the railway, metallurgy and machine building industries. Petro Shelest understood and felt the power and strength of Ukraine's economic potential. In 1940, he became the party secretary, and at the age of 32, he headed the defense industry of Kharkiv. At that time, he met leader of the Ukrainian SSR, Nikita Khrushchev, who saw the organizational skills of the young man. During World War II and after it, Shelest worked at defense enterprises and in Russia's aviation industry in the Urals, Saratov and Leningrad. He had the opportunity to compare the conditions of the industries of both Ukraine and Russia. In the late 1940s, Petro Shelest returned to Ukraine as head of the aircraft plant and launched the production of the multi-purpose light aircraft AN-2. In 1954, Shelest was offered to join party work. At first, he headed the Kiev city organization and then the Kiev regional organization of the Communist Party of Ukraine. Heading the Communist Party of the Soviet Union and the Council of Ministers of the USSR after Stalin's death, Nikita Khrushchev strengthened his environment using senior staff members from Ukraine. In June 1963, Khrushchev nominated head of the Communist Party of Ukraine, Nikolai Podgorsky, as secretary of the Central Committee of the CPSU, and the post of leader of the Ukrainian Communist Party was offered to Petro Shelest. At the plenary session of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of Ukraine, immediately after his appointment, Petro Shelest declared, as long as the heart beats in my chest, I will do everything to justify your trust. I am sure 
ensure that with the support of the Presidium, the Central Committee members and activists of the Republic, I will be able to continue the efforts of Nikita Khrushchev. But a year later, in autumn of 1964, Shellist played a decisive role in removing Khrushchev from power. Later in his memoirs, he repented for his actions, explaining that he didn't expect the stagnation during Brezhnev's times. Active participation of Petro Shellist in the plot targeting Khrushchev gave him the opportunity to lead Ukraine in the times of Brezhnev until the autumn of 1972. But Shellist turned out to be a non-obedient leader for Moscow. He tried to defend Ukraine's interests. This annoyed the supporters of the tight centralization in the USSR. For example, in 1965, the meeting of the Politburo of the CPSU Central Committee ended with his involvement in an open conflict. A small issue reached the highest level. That is, the USSR's Ministry of Foreign Trade sold cattle food intended for Ukraine to so-called fraternal states. Shellist was outraged, not by the fact that they were sold for next to nothing, but it was done without warning and preliminary discussion. In his speech to the Politburo, he stated that if it was necessary for the country, he was ready to share but only in compliance with the agreements. Shellester's offer was rejected and the Republican ministers were put on their heels. Shellest was an interesting person. He tried to be involved in reproduction of all that was Ukrainian in the framework of this party political and ideological structure. It was clear that Moscow didn't support it and not only here. We can remember Masharov in Belarus, who died in a car accident. We can remember many other people. The invisible confrontation between Ukraine and Moscow took root from that time. Shellest was a very serious opponent if someone would enter into an open conflict with him or his subordinates. Petro Shellest felt confident in the post of first secretary because an industrial and economically powerful Ukraine was behind him. In my opinion, Petro Shellest was a person who had to adapt. For some reason, I think he doubted in the correctness of communist ideas. He acted as the current possibilities and rules allowed him to act. In the late 1960s, Kiev began to dictate its conditions to Moscow. Usually, this concerned food supplies. Neither the USSR Ministry of Agriculture nor the party levers could force Ukraine to deliver more food than it was planned in Kiev. The Ukrainian Republic provided more and more bread each year. The failure in grain collecting in other republics was covered at the expense of Ukraine. Shelest understood this and did not go for concessions. Moreover, neither Brezhnev nor the Politburo of the CPSU Central Committee could lay claims against Petro Shelest. As the leader, Ukraine ranked first in the Soviet Union in terms of economic growth. Soviet republics were forbidden to independently build objects worth more than 3 million rubles. Petro Shelest was the first to violate this ban, having built the Ukraina Palace in Kiev. He went to the trick. He asked permission to build a modern cinema. When the fake was discovered, it was too late. The entire first floor of the Palace of Culture was completed. There were many similar cases. For example, he defended in Moscow the right to build the Museum of Folk Architecture and Life in Pirohovo. As I recall, Shelest ordered to restore the entire Cossack camp on the Hortice Island. This decision was made in those days. It was Petro Shelest who initiated the publication of the 26th volume, The History of Cities and Villages of the Ukrainian SSR. He was involved in promoting the Ukrainian language that was under Russian pressure. In the 1960s, the number of Ukrainian schools decreased significantly, while the portion of school children in Russian-speaking schools certainly grew. Shelest was concerned about this fact because he contributed to promoting the new type of national self-awareness. It was based on the pride of Ukraine, while combining elements of loyalty to the socialist system with local patriotism and the veneration of Ukrainian history and culture. I remember his book, Our Soviet Ukraine. I remember how we started reading the section devoted to the period of the Zaporizhian Sich, Hortice, etc. 
про хортицю і так далі. This book became the official pretext for the dismissal of Petro Schellest from office. He was accused of nationalism, in particular for the idealization of Ukraine's past and advocating the identity of the Ukrainian SSR. Even in the title of the Ukrainian version of the book, some saw the encrypted abbreviation UNR, hostile to the Soviet ideology of the Ukrainian People's Republic. The book was considered a mistake of the ideology, and was removed from sale and libraries. Shellest was accused of nationalist bias in the book that was full of pride for Ukrainian history and achievements of the Republic in the conditions of socialism. As soon as he began to overstep the bounds that the system allowed, Shellest was immediately neutralized. He appeared to be too much of a dramatic figure. On May the 10th, 1972, Petro Shellest was relieved of his post of the first secretary of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of Ukraine. The formal wording was due to the transfer to office. Petro Shellest's new office became the Council of Ministers of the USSR. He was taken to Moscow and provided with a post and then he was sent into retirement without the right to return to Ukraine. He was forced to live near Moscow, in a state villa, where he died. It's just like the Russian Empire did. Let's recall Hetman Petro Doroshenko and his fate. Petro Shellest was prohibited from returning to Ukraine in order not to awaken those attitudes that appeared in his book Our Soviet Ukraine. Leonid Brezhnev replaced Shellest with his lackey, Volodymyr Szczebutsky, who came from the Dnipropetrovsk Oblast. The Dnipropetrovsk group displaced other Ukrainian cadres in Moscow and Kiev, gaining even great control over the Soviet party and state machine. Szczebutsky, as head of the Ukrainian government, knew the Ukrainian economy well, and his influence allowed Moscow to control the situation in Ukraine. He was Ukrainian formally, his father was Ukrainian, his mother was from Poland, and he followed Soviet ideology. For this reason, he destroyed all that was Ukrainian, because he served the old guard in Moscow. You know, he was a so-called imperial type, and he tried to avoid any suspicions of being a non-internationalist. Shelest's departure from Ukraine was accompanied by purging among his expatriates and attacking Ukrainian intellectuals. Ivan Zhuba, the author of the National Communist book Internationalism or Russification, was sentenced to five years of correctional work and five years of exile for his book written in 1965. Mikhailo Brychevsky and dozens of other historians and literary scholars involved in the pre-revolutionary history of Ukraine and the history of the so-called nationalist Cossack era were purged from the institutions of the Academy of Sciences of the Ukrainian SSR. The KGB compensated the unfinished work of Petro Shelest in Ukraine. Petro Shelest survived all his offenders and saw an independent Ukraine. He died in January 1996 in Moscow. According to his will, he was buried in Kiev at the Baikovir Cemetery. According to Ukrainian historians, Petro Shelest was the 13th leader of Ukraine but became the only one accused of promoting Ukrainian nationalism.